I'm Jaspreet Chowdhury with the Ballot Initiative Strategy Center. I'm excited to partner with the State Innovation Exchange's Democracy Project to talk to you about ballot measures, why you as a progressive legislator should care about this important tool, and how you can identify and disrupt common tactics conservatives deploy to undermine direct democracy. Very simply, a ballot measure or ballot initiative is direct democracy a place where eligible voters can make decisions about policies that impact them in their daily lives. Advocates use ballot measures to win public policy that has stalled under the dome, or to apply pressure or to raise awareness about an important topic or change the underlying narrative about an important issue. Ballot measures should be understood as complementary, not oppositional to your daily work inside the Capitol. We all win when legislators work with advocates to move progressive policy. Ballot measures come in many forms, depending on the state. Most common are citizen-initiated ballot measures and legislatively referred ballot measures. 24 states have citizen-initiated ballot measures, which allow voters to propose and enact new state statutes and or constitutional amendments. Legislatively referred ballot measures allow lawmakers to send constitutional or statutory questions to voters for approval. While conservatives also use ballot measures to advance their goals, progressive advocates nationwide are harnessing the power of the initiative to expand opportunities for all communities, black, white, and brown, across red, blue, and purple states. In 2018 alone, the people of Idaho, Nebraska, and Utah voted to expand Medicaid and provide health care access to thousands of people. Washington enacted comprehensive gun safety reforms, Michigan legalized marijuana, and Florida, Maryland, Michigan, and Nevada expanded voting access for millions of Americans. These are incredible policy victories where voters join together to demand a better future, shared prosperity, and racial justice. The ballot measure process made all these wins possible. Ballot measures can also enrich our democracy and encourage civic participation. Voters of color disproportionately say they would be more enthusiastic about voting, knowing that progressive initiatives were on their ballot. Legislators are key stakeholders in this process. Legislators set the rules that allow initiatives to qualify for the ballot and become law. And while ballot measures are not the only tactic to win progressive change, they are a crucial tool for our movement that legislators should understand and fight to protect. Unfortunately today, we're seeing more and more coordinated legislative backlash against the ballot measure process. Most often in states, where voters succeeded in passing progressive reforms. In 2019, an unprecedented number of bills were introduced to make it harder for voters to use ballot measures in the future. Changes to ballot measure rules are often presented as reforms to improve or safeguard the process, when often both the intention and the impact is to make citizen initiatives more expensive and less accessible. We've known for years that these attacks are part of a coordinated effort. The Republican State Leadership Committee openly discredits progressive ballot measures and is determined to limit access to direct democracy. And conservative organizations like the American Legislative Exchange Council, aka ALEC, have distributed model legislation to preempt local ballot initiatives. Part of being a progressive legislator is opening the door for more folks to participate in our democracy. To be an effective advocate for direct democracy, we want you to understand the basic rules of the ballot measure process and likely threats. There are three distinct phases to the ballot measure process, and each presents threats for legislators to be aware of. The first is the qualification stage. The second is the campaign and election phase. And third is the post-election period. Here, we're gonna focus on the qualification and election periods, which is where we've seen the most legislative attempts to change the process. In the qualification phase, advocates must demonstrate that an issue has enough support to make it onto the state's ballot. 
This is done by circulating petitions and collecting a certain number of verified voter signatures. Legislation that makes it harder for initiatives to qualify has become increasingly common and significantly harms direct democracy. This includes bills that increase the number of voter signatures needed for an initiative to qualify, create or toughen geographic distribution requirements for petition signatures, restrict who can petition voters, and make the process for verifying signatures harder and more costly to comply with. For example, after Idaho voters chose to expand Medicaid, the legislature advanced a retaliatory bill that would have required future ballot measures to obtain a much higher percentage of voter signatures strictly spread across different parts of the state. This may sound like a neutral proposal, but this type of tactic creates discriminatory impacts where small rural communities have effective veto power over the interests of larger cities and towns. In Idaho, the governor vetoed this bill, but it was intended to make it harder for ballot measure advocates to succeed. Legislators can affect ballot measures post-election by undermining implementation. Increasingly, lawmakers that dislike the outcome of a ballot measure election are delaying implementation or proposing legislation to subvert the intent or impact of the initiative. For example, in 2018, Florida voters overwhelmingly passed a ballot measure to re-enfranchise 1.4 million returning citizens with a felony conviction. But just a few months later, conservative lawmakers enacted a bill that prevents people with outstanding fines and fees from having their voting rights restored. This move blatantly undermined the will of Florida voters. Florida clearly shows that our work defending direct democracy doesn't end on election day. Advocates and legislators must work together in good faith to carry out what voters intend. With legislators' help, we can defend direct democracy and protect a key lever of progressive change. Here are five ways to engage and learn more. One, when considering changes to your ballot measure process, check with local progressive allies, BISC and SIX, to make sure you don't inadvertently create barriers to direct democracy. Two, help advocates draft language for ballot measures that is politically and legally sound. When legislators and advocates team up, ballot measures are more likely to withstand challenges and less likely to be undermined. Three, email us to learn more about your state's ballot measure process, threats, and how to fight back. Four, become a six democracy champion. Visit stateinnovation.org backslash democracy to learn more and join the fight. Five, join the BIS listserv to receive the latest news on ballot measures. Thank you for joining us today.